Hey guys, I thought I would do another example of what we did in class today, the logical implication and the logical equivalence. Uh, so I'll just pick one from the homework. Um, let's, do, uh, let's do six, okay? So if I'm gonna see if A logically implies B, oops, six, then I basically am looking for this. A implies B, and I'm trying to see if this ends up being a tautology where all the final, you know, that final column is all true. So if A implies B, and lo uh, if A logically implies B, this should be a tautology. So I'm, I'm basically just going to use this model, set up a truth table, and see what happens. Uh, all right, so I'm going to have P and Q, P and Q, and I'm going to do this one all the way through, and then I'll show you what I meant by, you know, you don't always have to show all the steps, but for the first one, I will. So true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and A is not the quantity P implies Q. So, or if P then Q. So I'll just, I'll set up a, you know, a different column for each one. So there's the not, the negation. I got my P here. I got the if then statement, or if, that, if then connective, and then my Q. And that's essentially, this is A right here, right? That's A. Then I'm gonna check that to B, which is P and not Q. Okay, so there's all the pieces of the puzzle. And uh, I'm going to set up all my columns. And I'm just going to go one at a time. And again, you've got creative freedom on how you want to kind of draw this and use colors or whatever works for you. I'm just going to start out with the blue as all for all my basics. So P I know is true, true, false, false. That's easy. That's always P, so true, true, false, false. And my Q's are all true, false, true, false. That's the way I chose to set it up. And there's my Q's. True, false, true, false. All right, now I'm gonna change colors. I'll go to uh, red here, and I'll do my first sort of layer of stuff. So if I'm going left to right, and I just, I wanna take care of these parentheses first, so I really want this if then, uh, connective taken care of. So the only time an if then connective is actually false is if when you have if true then false, which it looks like it happens here in the second in the second row. So this is true, this is false, this is true, and this is true. That's our rule for if then. Uh, at the same level, I can do my negation for Q. So that's false, true, false, true. So that's basically the first level of stuff to do. I'll switch to uh, orange here. And we'll do the negation of the if then for P and Q. So that's just flip flopping. So true becomes false, false becomes true, true becomes false, and true becomes false. So at this moment, I actually have my final sort of column for A, right? This whole thing right here, here, I'll write it again. This is basically A right here. Right here is A, and then B is here. That's B. So what I just did in orange is the final column for A. So now I know the entire truth values for every case for A. So anytime I need this again, I can just use this. I've already gone through the work. So when I go to do, you know, question two from the homework, you know, B, does B logically imply A? I, I'm going to know what these are. All I have to do is get the order right. Okay. All right. So that takes care of my A. Um, for B, I got to do an AND connective, so that's only true when they're both true. So this is false. They're both true here, so that's true. False, false. So this right here represents all of B. So I have all of A, all of B. So if A logically implies B, then I want to check this truth connective with my two oranges. So I'll do that in green. So I'm basically comparing this to this with this connective. That would, that's what I'm looking for to see if there's a tautology. So false, false is true. True, true is true. Remember, the only time this is ever false is if you have an if true, then false uh, statement. So this is false, false, that's true. False, false is true. And check that out. We have a tautology. All the, all the whole column is true. So that means A does logically imply B. So my answer to question one for, for par, or part one, I guess, for question six would be yes. So yes, okay? A logically implies B, okay? Based on this truth table. So there's the real like grunt work that you kind of have to just deal with. 
But the next parts should be pretty easy. If you did this part right, obviously if you messed up, then something's gonna go wrong. But if this part's right, then to, then to do this part here, the B implies A, I'm really just gonna use these. I don't wanna, I don't need to recopy everything, okay? I can, I can basically just copy down what I had for B, which is false, true, false, false. False, true, false, false. Let me clean that up just a little bit. Nah, I missed that a little bit, but you get the idea. False, true, false, false is B. A is false, true, false, false. False, true, false, false. And now I'm just comparing those. True, 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 and true. I have another tautology for B implies A. B logically implies A. So if A logically implies B, and B logically implies A, guess what? They're logically equivalent. That's when we said if it works both ways. If they're both tautologies, then it works both ways. Could you do this instead? Or not instead, but in addition to? What if we do this? What if, yeah, I'll do it down here just because there's a little more room. What if I actually check the biconditional for A to B? Which remember, this means if A then B and if B then A, it's both. So I can check them both. And I know A already is false, true, false, false. False, true, false, false. And I know B is false, true, false, false. Right? I've already done all that work. I don't have to do it again. And for a biconditional to be true, both truth values of the each part have to be the same. So if both of these are false, that makes this true. Both of these are true, that's true. Both are false, true. Both are false, true. And there you go. A is logically equivalent to B. And that's that's all. I mean, I, I probably even wrote more than you need, but that's what I'm looking for. Like this part here to kind of get it going. And then once you know A and B, you can just sort of use the shortcuts. All right. And you can pretty much do that for all of them. And in some cases, actually, like I was looking at six real quick as I was writing it down, the, so they have the same A. So once you did it in number five, if you don't want to do it all over again, you don't have to. You kind of know what A is. You could even write a little note saying, you know, from number five, A, or sorry, I cut off there. For uh, number five, A is this. Now again, you gotta just sort of hope you didn't mess up, but uh, you know, and then all the other ones might mess up. But check your answers as you go, and make sure it it makes sense, and make sure you know everything's working out. But this is all I, all I'm looking for. Check one way, check the other way, check the biconditional. Or to be honest, you should be able to just tell from here, right? If they're both tautologies, you're done. If either one of these is not a tautology, then they don't they're not logically equivalent. You don't even have to show this. I was just kind of doing this for you know sort of hammering it home. Okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to do more examples if you totally get stuck. Or if you want to send a picture of what you did on a problem and you're, you feel like something's wrong but you don't know what, I can take a look. Just try to, try to really make it so it's easy to follow. Okay, use colors if you want. Use, uh, you know, do circles and boxes if you want. Put little stars underneath. Whatever you want to do to make it obvious what you're comparing, that, that makes it easier to check. Okay? All right. Good luck. And uh, again, let me know if you need any help.